I've played Guild Wars 2 for over 20,000 hours, and I've learned a whole lot and collected just about everything in the game, so it's a perfect time to go round again. Join me in the adventures of my completely fresh account known only as the Microtransaction Enjoyer on the quest of obtaining and unlocking everything in the game, from legendary gear and mounts to living world story episodes, maps, and ultimate gem store quality of life, purely through efficient and somewhat sensible gameplay. No real money required. Absolutely insane. You love to see that, right? Okay, here we go. I'm gonna join. I'm actually gonna join this squad here because this is something that you need to get used to. That's right. We're gonna be doing meta trains because this, as you probably got by now, is kind of the definitely the bread and butter, the beginning point for your journey into account progression. So let's go ahead and join this squad and let's see what they go ahead and do. A very common thing is that squads will move from map to map together, uh, completing loads of content uh, all in one go, right? And essentially farming gold together, right? It's very, very good stuff. This event, not the most rewarding event in the world, but this kind of happens with trains, right? Like when you're going through a meta train, you're going to be doing events sequentially. And that doesn't mean that sometimes you're going to be doing some slightly lower value events. So we're just going to be doing the standard Ender Dragon's metas here. Uh, doing this, we'll do Echavold after that, and then probably a Dragon's End. Might try and get some strike missions in at the end of the day as a bit of an introduction to strikes um, in that regard. So stay tuned. Stay tuned for strike missions. I think what I might go ahead and do is Ice Brood Saga strike missions, and then we'll go uh, directly into a Dragon Storm, maybe with 10 players. So I might get a squad together uh, for drag uh, for strikes, and then we'll do a 10-man uh, Dragon Storm at the end, which again was um, in some of the previous uh, Zero to Hero streams I mentioned this. It is one of the craziest value uh, events that you possibly can. Someone was asking about how to measure your performance. Um, the best way to do that is going to be Arc DPS and extensions of Arc DPS. Specifically, you can um, see your boon uptime in Arc DPS too. And that's going to be a really good thing for you to uh, basically do. So you can see your boon uptime if you're, uh, you know, if you're a class that's uh, really important for uh, applying boons. And obviously your damage output as well. I'll actually be going over how to read Arc DPS, how to read logs, um, and how to interpret that information in a later episode of Zero to Hero. Because, you know, if you are an aspiring player and you really want to get to grips, ultimately you need data. You need feedback. You need to understand uh, what you're doing well, maybe what you're not doing so well, right? Uh, and so you can improve your gameplay. Okay, there we are. Good stuff. And we got it done. Very nice. Yeah. Oh, and actually, there's a bit of a side thing here. Um, I guess I better talk about this. So the masteries that I'm going to be working on uh, on this account, number one in EOD, we're getting ourselves Jade Bot. The other masteries, they're kind of fun, right? Um, and they're kind of nice. But the Jade Bot mastery, I think, is really high value. Just being able to get about the place, right? Um, a little bit easier. I think another option you could really go for is Arbor Stone, actually. Arbor Stone would be huge. Uh, because uh, if we get this, it allows us to buy five antique summoning stones per week. Uh, because of this globalization uh, one there, which will basically give us like a free kind of 30 gold a week just by basically trading in like a few gold and a few currencies from Ender Dragons. Really nice gold there as well. Huge value. Huge, huge value. But I definitely want to go a little bit into Jade Bot because I think Jade Bot is really, really valuable actually. Uh, there's like a few of these it will help us get around the map a little bit easier. Uh, use all of the little widgets around on the map. And after we've got a few of these, maybe we'll just get to multi-charge perhaps actually. Um, and then I think after that we're going to go into Arbor Zone to get to those... Um, to get over to that area there. But yeah, Jade Bot, very convenient. Like, really, really good convenience for uh, basically everywhere that has those Jade Bots. So we're going to be getting on that very, very quickly. And then Arbor Stone afterwards, because again, those are the two, like, really big ones. The other Masteries, they're not, they're, they're more like fluff Masteries, kind of fun. Like, riding around on a boat, that's kind of cool. Right, fishing, obviously. Actually, good gold per hour if you're into that sort of thing, actually. Um, if you want to get into fishing. Uh, but just in general. Uh, I, uh, I'm just going to go for the kind of more gameplay oriented ones, the more gameplay ones. But at the end of the day, I'll tell you a little bit of a secret. Don't worry too much about optimizing your masteries, actually. Uh, you'll get them all in the end. It's not like you have to pick them. Uh, pick the ones that you think are fun, but I'm going to be going for a specific path just to make things a little bit easier and accelerate my progress a touch at the same time. Oh, double torch there. Love to see that. Very nice. Mega burning. Look at that. 14k burns on a support build. Oh, yeah. I'm unhinged because of you. Yeah, it's good. I, I'm going to add unhinged to that, too. Very nice. Okay, what is going on here, by the way? I cannot hit this frog. 
It's like desynced or something. The frog is unkillable. I will defeat you, frog. I think it's working. Here we got him. Level 83 frog. Very nice. Okay. There we are. We got it. We got her. Sue one down. Another dragon's end locked in. What was loot for dragon? So loot for the dragon, the big one is this, the antique something. So we get our, you get like loads of rare gear, loads of items, like all that stuff. Champion bags, right? Rares, um, you know, materials, like various stuff. The big thing though is right at the end, you can get an antique summoning stone. And this is just an item that you can just straight up sell. They're in very high demand, a very high value item for legendaries and ender dragons. And it's just six gold. But we also got 15 memories of Aureen, which are also worth around 70 silver each. So the actual loot from clearing Dragon's End right now, now is insane. It's probably... What do you actually get for that for Dragon's End? Is it... Is it 15 gold? It's probably around 15 gold. Maybe a touch more than 15 gold. Actually. Uh, in that situation. It's very, very rewarding actually, I think. Okay, good. Very nice. Very good. Oh, hang on a minute. I need to... Yeah, here we go. Are we getting hits? We are. Great. I feel bad for this. Like, it's just like a fish and we're just killing it. It hasn't really done anything wrong. You know, we've just destroyed it. Just for no reason. You know, I kind of wish the Naga were a bit more relevant, you know? Like, there's no, like, big Naga boss. It's like a champion boss here. But look how cool these models are, right? They make all these really sick models with the Naga and the Kappa. Uh, and then they actually barely end up relevant in any way, right? In a meta event or in the story. You know, it's actually a little bit, you know, like, oh, it's, yeah. Okay, now I think it's actually just about time for us to have a little bit of an adventure into some strike missions, actually. So, here's the thing about strike missions. You might go, wait a minute, isn't that like 10 player basically raid content? Well, this is kind of true, but strike missions in Guild Wars 2 are actually not really intended. Um, they're not really intended to be super prohibitive for new players whatsoever, actually. They are very much intended to be the first kind of thing you dip your toe into in terms of group content. They're actually, in a way, you're supposed to do them even before you get to fractals, really, because they don't have this kind of gear system. They are very relaxed in terms of how punishing the mechanics are, how much damage you'll need to do them, like what kind of group comp you'll need, like, you know, if you're going to be using consumables or not or anything like that. This is actually very, very relaxed content. These are actually great to uh, get into very early on in your Guild Wars 2 career, even if you've just got level 80 or you've just kind of completed the story, you are absolutely fine to go ahead and get into strike missions, um, essentially like right after uh, you've got to max level and you'll be fine. Like they won't be stressing you out too much. It won't be too brutal or anything like that. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to make my own group. Here we go. Okay, uh, let's see. What strike missions are we going to do here? I won't actually do the harder ones yet because again, we're going to do the slightly more relaxing ones. So let's go ahead and do Freyner of Jormag, Shiver Peaks Pass, and Voice of the Fall. I think I think this is, by the way, it. we will actually use a colloquial term here. This is referred to in the Guild Wars 2 community as Easy 3. So we're going to go ahead and just say Easy 3, right? We're going to go ahead and say um, Ice Brood Saga. Okay, uh, Ice Brood Strikes, Easy 3. Okay, um, Shiver Peaks Pass. Freynir and Coden, right? All welcome. Let's go. This is an example of a entry-level group description that you could put on the LFG. Boom! Let's go. And actually, I will go into the instance already because the first one that we're going to do is actually going to have a little bit of a jumping puzzle at the start. So let's roll. Okay, and here we go. Our group is starting to come together, and we'll just go ahead and start this event right now, and we'll get going on these strike missions. And again, you know what's funny about this? Is it straight up? These bosses here, they are, of course, instant, so you have to kind of actively get a group instead of open world. But actually, here's a really fun fact about this. A lot of these bosses are actually easier, I would say significantly easier, than some of the bosses that we've actually faced in the open world. In particular, looking at stuff like Su-Wan in Dragon's End, or even stuff like Chat Geraint and potentially 
um, bosses like the uh, the Echovolt Forest giant golem thing, you actually might find that uh, these bosses are actually easier. You'll probably find them mechanically easier to deal with um, than some of the stuff you actually find in the open world. So do not be intimidated by strike missions. They're actually really good gold per hour. They are excellent for progressing your account. They give you currency where you can buy gear with. They give you gold. They give you things that you can turn into loads of other useful currencies and materials. All that kind of stuff. They are very, very nice indeed. High value, high gaming. And yeah, you can very easily fill. Like, stuff like this will fill very quickly as well. Um, there are a lot of players looking to get into this. You won't be waiting for long for strike missions because people love to get in there and farm this stuff big time and go crazy. Get some big gold, big account progression, all that kind of stuff. The only thing that I want to do here is actually try and organize our subgroups a little bit. Uh, because just like an open world, we want to make sure that our boon distribution kind of makes sense here. So we want to actually nudge things around a little bit. I actually need one player. I think we actually need some alacrity. We have a ridiculous amount of... Actually, we have a druid and a spectre, so in theory we don't. I think we just need anything. I'm just going to go ahead and say we need anything. There we go. Doesn't matter. And now someone did the jump puzzles, we can just teleport in. Now... I, the, the issue here is that because I don't have a commander tag, I actually can't organize the subgroups. So I'm going to see if anyone's got a commander tag. Does anyone have commander tag question mark? Let's see if anyone does. Because that will be very useful if they did. Because I can't do it. I can't move players, which actually really sucks. People would have to move themselves. But the good news is, is that this individual has the tag. You can give me... Uh, Lieutenant, I will sort the groups. Okay, so now I have um, the ability to sort subgroups. So just like open world, we're going to be looking to have quickness and alacrity and a healer in both subgroups. So druid is typically a healer, right? So we're going to have that there. I'm a healer for my group and I give quickness. So we need an alacrity source for my group. I'm going to assume that this spectre is going to give alacrity, which is a pretty safe bet in general. Alacrity usually gives, spe um, a spectre usually gives alacrity. We actually have a lot of extra quickness. So I'm just going to put a, a, a herald in each. These heralds are both going to give quickness. So we're going to overcap a bit there too. That's fine though. Not really a big deal. We have a scourge and there. And now let's go ahead and just check over there. So we have alacrity and quickness in group two. We have quickness, quickness, alacrity in group one. Like that. And we also have a healer in each group as well. Uh, so we're basically good to go. Doesn't have to be perfect. And again, we're not exactly optimal here. We've got a good kind of smattering variety of different builds and different professions here. But this will absolutely get us through um, these strike missions coming up. This golem looks very scary, but actually you can solo him as it turns out. So he's, uh, he's a little bit of a pathetic weakling. We're going to crush him. No problem. Absolutely annihilate him. I'm going to crush. Right, so this guy, what does he do? Well... Not that much, to be honest. There'll be some red stuff, doesn't really hit that hard, and a shockwave that you can jump over. But honestly, if you don't want to, that's okay as well. It's actually very optional. Uh, <laughs> you can counter that with stability, but that's just about it. As you can see, doesn't have that much health either. Just kind of like a good fight to practice jumping. His attack here, you can just dodge that. it will then spin everyone around, just like this. It's going to be a good time. Hell yeah. Look at that. We're, we're everywhere. Wow. Insane. At 50%, he has this like little phase thing. And I'll have a slightly more aggressive attack. He'll, he'll summon some little pillars that you're going to have to stand on to avoid getting hit by a mega shockwave that will knock you back. But the thing is, we'll actually be able to ignore it pretty effectively as well here. Uh, as again, we can simply use our stability to ignore the knockback. You can see here, he's just dropping down these little platforms that you want to stand on. But we actually don't need to. Because again, like... The mechanic here is that you have to stand on these little platforms um, where he's, you know, when he's going to smash down his, like, mega hand. But you can actually just go ahead and totally ignore that. You can see here he's going to smash there. So what it wants you to do is do this. It wants you to stand on this one, right? But you can, you can see it doesn't really do much damage and you can ignore it with stability, right? And I actually jumped off too soon because I, you know, I was like, I need to go help my team. But that's what you're supposed to do. Job done. It's actually a really big bonus, by the way. To doing these strike missions for the first time. Uh, there, there were basically a series of achievements added to Guild Wars 2. Um, that were basically a, a, a revisiting of all of the living world. And the ones for the strike missions, they're called the Return to Achievements. When you do these strike missions, you actually get a insane amount of loot. Specifically, you can see here whether we get Mystic Clovers and Obsidian Shards. These are actually very valuable. Mystic Clovers are worth around, I want to say... 
five gold each approximately. So we've just got 35 gold in account value towards maybe a legendary weapon that we'd like to craft. And you actually see that we're going to be getting this as we do more of these strike missions. And by the end of like a strike mission run, you'll end up with a good chunk of these clovers. Bear in mind that is only the first time you do them though. So even if you don't want to repeat strike missions, doing a clear of all of the strike missions for the first time ever will massively bump you towards getting your a legendary weapon done or a legendary item done. So it's very highly valuable there. Now we're going to move on to our next strike. And you can see how quick that is, right? That's the big thing here. Like, you don't get an insane amount of gold, but they're very fast, right? You can see here that, boom, done. Few minutes, easy. Next one. Same group, boom. Here we go. We're going to go again. I don't have the masteries for this yet. I need to actually get into the Ice Brood Saga to get those masteries. I'm learning them now, actually, as you can see. We need to... Look, long story short, you need to unlock tier two here uh, to get m more loot from the chests, right? Like, it, it's unnecessarily elaborate and confusing. Level these up, okay? And you're going to get more loot from strike missions. That's it. Nothing super crazy there. Pretty straightforward. That is what you got to do. Okay, this these are bears. The big gimmick here is that you got to kill them at the same time. They'll leap around, they'll knock you down, right? They're going to do all this crazy stuff, right? That isn't really the important factor. The important factor is that if you don't kill them at the same time, you could quite possibly have a very unfortunate time as one of them will become very, very angry uh, and start smashing you uh, really, really hard. So watch out for that. So basically just keep an eye on the hit points and then just go. Projectile Reflect can actually be really nicer because, again, um, they have, like, some projectiles that you can reflect back on them. I won't be able to do it this time, but hopefully one of the other players will be able to. We, You can get a mobilize hit. We can just cleanse that immobilize just like that. Well, cleanse people and just heal people through all of this. As you can see, this is a bit of a harder strike mission. The boss is starting to do a little bit more DPS. There's a bit more damage coming through here, as you can see. But we're able to heal it quite nicely and survive. Here we go. And now we can just finish off this one here. Because the other one's nearly dead. It will probably just die to conditions. And because there is a good chunk of crowd control, it is really good to have some stability here. We'll make things a lot easier. So now you can see we've killed one of them. So the other one starts going insane and starts doing these massive conal attacks. But you actually don't have to worry about that. You can just completely ignore that. But yeah, as you can see here, it says, Oh no! I need to train my essence to actually unlock these mega chests. But, you know... Just do that, right? Do some open world in Ice Brood Saga. Make sure you have your mastery points and you're going to have a great time. And then you can see that we get another seven clovers for doing this for the first time. So really getting some big bank here. Yeah. But yeah, get up to tier three in that mastery and you're good to go. You've got fat loot, massive loot, and you're having a good time. Big loot, tier two, tier three, easy peasy. You love to see it, my friends. You love to see it. Now we've got one more of these uh, relatively easy strike missions to go. And then after that, we're going to do Dragon Storm. This is a really good thing you can do. And I, well, I'll talk about that a little bit later. We'll do this, uh, we'll do this first. We'll do this uh, Freyner first. Then I, uh, after the Dragon Storm, I might go ahead and do some of the... I'll do the two easier End of Dragons ones too. All right, here we go. So this guy... Uh, I, I, I wouldn't call it particularly difficult. You can get frozen. Look, look at all these noobs getting frozen over there. So in general, just try and stay in the center and don't stand in this orange stuff because you can get frozen. That shockwave there will knock you down, but I use stability to counter it. This attack will target a player and then knock them back. It will fire a projectile that you can dodge. And then these little icicles will freeze you if you get hit by them. So in general, just try to basically stand in the center. Don't get frozen. Don't get baited when he runs out. He's just going to come back immediately anyway. There are a few different phases here. And there can be a few slightly spooky things going on here. There's going to be a moment where the boss is going to fire out a bunch of projectiles at us that can actually do relatively heavy damage. Uh, but we can simply reflect those or outheal them when it comes to that as well. But as you can see here, you even have a little bit of learning from the first one that we encountered, right? You're seeing some similar mechanics from that Shiver Peaks past the Ice Golem. And it is actually shared here. It's the same basic attacks, that Shockwave thing. You have kind of like the side swipe thing, this attack here, that knockback. It's kind of a bit bugging out because it is dying rather quickly, but don't mind that, guys. Guild Wars 2 is a game that is perfectly developed and doesn't have any bugs. You're lucky we're not doing Whisper of Jormag. There's that knockback attack there when he just goes invulnerable in phases. Oh, he's just good to go. We're going to be seeing the uh, projectile attack coming through. That's the projectile attack. We're just going to get some reflects up for that. As you can see, we're using our third tome skill to reflect those projectiles back towards the boss. 
It won't do any damage, but it will prevent any of that damage coming in. Projectile reflection is definitely something that you need to understand how it works, right? And, you know, be aware of what abilities can be reflected to counter some of that stuff. We have some more projectiles coming in now, but we can just go ahead and just heal through these, right? Going to drop all of our big heals on our second tome ability and just continue to heal people through. Because again, like the role that I'm playing here, I do some damage because I'm playing the Celestial stat and I have the Axe weapon. But I am primarily focusing here which on my role, which is basically a support. I am not actually playing super aggressive. I'm playing nice and defensive so that my team is healthy and we're just getting some really good damage here uh, across the board. As you can see here, we're nearly now done. And that's basically it. And there you go. Um, hopefully that didn't look too scary. Uh, I promise you it isn't. That's, that, that's honestly... You could expect to see your groups go that way pretty much every time. No toxicity, everyone's chill, people are just blasting away, right? They die pretty quick, they should die first try in most groups. As long as you have a little bit of preparation, you know, you think about your composition, you kind of make sure that everyone's running boons, we've got boons, we've got quickness, we've got protection, we've got healers, right? Two healers, all that kind of stuff. You're going to find that actually, you'll be have a, you'll have a really, really good shot at getting that. And look, notice this, 45 silver, 45 liquid silver for that. We got rares, we're going to get more loot once we've leveled up our Ice Brood Saga Masteries as well, right? So we've got these Masteries, these Essence, these basically give you more loot. We've got to level up to level three to get even more loot uh, in this regard here. Uh, but we're already getting a nice amount of liquidity from doing that. This is an excellent addition to be added to your daily routine and very much so even as a newer player. Again, just to reiterate, these are not raids. These are entry-level group replayable content, right? So it's just something that you can play with your friends or with players on the LFG anytime, right? Because of course, open world is on a schedule, right? Like you can't just randomly do open world content. Um, you you actually have to essentially, um, you know, you have to you have to wait for the open world events to come around. But with these, we can do it anytime we want, fit it into our schedule, get some big loot, have a good time. And again, fairly straightforward, uh, won't cause you too much trouble, even as a very, very new player. Let's go ahead and get into this Dragonstorm. Now, I actually forgot to say in the LFG that we were doing Dragonstorm afterwards. Bit of a clown fiesta there by me, uh, uh, but that's okay though. We're going to go ahead and um, put that here, I guess, is what we will do. I will go ahead and put us in the, uh, the looking for group for... Where should I actually put this? I don't think it... Should it go in strike missions? I think it actually might not want to do that. I don't think it really matters where I put it, but... I'll just put it in champions, I guess. Um, that's pro oh, wait. Try to oh, wait. Oh, I'm not the com, am I, actually? So I can't even do it, but I'll tell the com to do it. Most of put it in strikes. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, we'll put it in strike missions then. Yeah, put it in strike. Okay, great. Yeah. That'll do it. Here we go. For dragons, so I didn't really talk about this from a guide perspective, um, but this, this boss, just don't stand in the red. There you go. Follow the instructions. Don't stand in the red. Pretty simple. Classic MMO stuff. Let's get some DPS going. Look at all these boons. Oh, wait. Braham? I need to go over to Braham here. Like, this is not good. These have to die at the same time. Watch out for that one. Watch out. Okay. Now that we're here, we should be able to speed this up quite nicely, though. Because we're this is like the really nice thing about playing this hybrid build, uh, is that the hybrid build can contribute to the damage, but it can also contribute to all of the support at the same time, which is very nice. So let's go ahead and do that. Hmm. We need to try and stack as much as possible because this guy actually leaps to the furthest target away, which can be a little bit annoying. We are starting to catch up though; things are evening out, which is good. It's going to give stability here. There's a bunch of projectiles flying around, so we're just going to get some reflects up to try and counter those. My food has run out. And, well, you know, we haven't really talked about consumables yet. I wouldn't worry too much about consumables in entry-level strike missions, but they are actually very powerful. It's something that you definitely want to be thinking about uh, as you get deeper and deeper into the end game. Consumables will give you that extra edge you need to take content down. Epic. Very nice. Very, very nice indeed. We did it. What? Are you actually kidding me? I have never got this on my main, and I'm not joking, and I've done this a lot. 